Have you ever wondered what lies beneath the ocean's surface? We're about to embark on a journey into the depths of the sea, but first, let's start at the surface. The uppermost layer of the ocean, the surface, is a bustling hub of life. Its temperatures vary greatly, from steamy near the equator to icy at the poles. In this layer, sunlight penetrates, nurturing a variety of life forms. Planktons, the microscopic life forms, start the food chain, feeding everything from tiny krill to hulking whales. Dolphins playfully dart about, their clicks and whistles piercing the blue expanse. Sharks, the ocean's apex predators, patrol these waters with deadly precision. And a myriad of fish, in all shapes and sizes, swim in schools, painting the seascape with their vibrant colors and patterns. The surface layer is a world teeming with life, a testament to the ocean's majestic diversity. But hold your breath, as this is just the tip of the iceberg or should we say, the surface of the ocean. As we descend deeper, we enter the twilight zone. This part of the ocean is a realm of perpetual dusk, where the sun's rays struggle to penetrate, and the world becomes a dim, cold and pressurized environment. It's a place where the temperature can dip below 5 degrees Celsius, and the atmospheric pressure can be a hundred times greater than at sea level. In this seemingly inhospitable environment, life thrives against the odds. The creatures that call this place home have evolved in remarkable ways to navigate their shadowy world. They are not only survivors, but innovators, turning the challenges of their environment into strengths. The lack of sunlight has led to the development of bioluminescence, a chemical reaction within the body that produces light. Animals like the lanternfish and hatchetfish light up the darkness with their glowing bodies, creating a mesmerizing spectacle in the gloomy depths. These pulsating lights serve a multitude of purposes, from attracting prey to warding off predators to communicating with potential mates. The cold temperatures that might seem unbearable to us are just another day in the life for these marine animals. They've adapted to thrive in the cold with slow metabolisms that require less energy and antifreeze proteins that prevent their blood from crystallizing. The increased pressure of the twilight zone is handled with grace by these creatures. Their bodies are often soft and flexible, allowing them to withstand the immense pressure without being crushed. They are masters of their domain, perfectly adapted to their unique circumstances. Take for instance the giant squid, a creature of legend and mystery. With its enormous size and deep-sea dwelling habits, it's managed to elude scientists for centuries. Or consider the anglerfish, with its monstrous appearance and bioluminescent lure, it's a true embodiment of the Twilight Zone's alien-like characteristics. The Twilight Zone is an alien world, but it's nothing compared to what's next. As we dive deeper we'll explore even more fascinating and extreme environments, shedding light on the mysteries that lie in the darkest corners of our planet. So, hang tight as we continue our descent into the unknown. Deeper still, we enter the Midnight Zone. At this point we have plunged over 2,000 feet below the ocean's surface. Here, the warm sun's rays are nothing more than a distant memory, completely absent in this lightless realm. The temperature plummets dramatically dropping to just above freezing. The pressure? It's another story. It skyrockets to a staggering 300 times greater than what we experience at sea level. In this realm of perpetual night, life takes on forms that can only be described as alien. Take for instance, the fangtooth fish. This menacing creature, named for its long sharp teeth, has the largest teeth of any fish in the ocean proportional to its body size. Then there's the viper fish, another denizen of the deep with its needle-like teeth and hinged lower jaw. It's a world where the grotesque is commonplace and the extraordinary is routine. Living in the midnight zone requires some extreme adaptations. Many inhabitants have developed the ability to produce their own light through a process called bioluminescence. This is not just a pretty party trick, but a critical survival technique. It can be used to lure unsuspecting prey, distract or blind predators, or even communicate with potential mates. Creatures here also have highly developed senses to help them navigate in the darkness. The snipe eel, for example, has a highly sensitive, elongated body that can detect the slightest movement in the water, helping it locate prey in the pitch-black environment. These animals have also adapted to the extreme pressure. Their bodies are soft and flexible without air-filled spaces like lungs or swim bladders that could be crushed under the immense weight of the water above. The midnight zone is a place of darkness and mystery, but we're not done descending yet. So hold your breath and prepare to dive deeper into the ocean's depths as we continue our journey into the unknown. Beyond the midnight zone, we find the abyss. 
Here, we descend into a realm where the sun's rays are but a distant memory, and the weight of the ocean above exerts an almost unimaginable pressure. The temperatures hover just above freezing, and life as we know it becomes scarce. Yet in this harsh and unforgiving environment, a select band of organisms have made their home. One such creature is the Dumbo octopus, a creature whose name is inspired by the fictional elephant due to its ear-like fins. Residing at depths of up to 7,000 feet, this octopus is a master of survival in the abyss. Unlike its shallow water counterparts, the Dumbo octopus doesn't have an ink sac because let's face it, there's no need for a quick inky escape when your predators can barely see you in the first place. Then we have the grenadier fish, a species that looks like it swam straight out of a science fiction movie. With its elongated body, large head, and eyes that glow in the dark, the grenadier fish truly embodies the phrase, adapt or die. This fish has a slow metabolism to conserve energy, and can survive on the scant food that trickles down from above. These creatures and others like them, are testament to the incredible adaptability of life. They have evolved to survive in an environment that is as far removed from our human experience as the surface of another planet. Their bodies are a complex symphony of adaptations, from bioluminescent lures to slow metabolic rates, all designed to help them endure in the face of the abyss's crushing pressures, near freezing temperatures, and eternal darkness. The abyss is a world of extremes, but there's one more layer to explore. So, let's continue our descent, as we plunge deeper into the ocean's depths, toward the mysteries that await us in the Hadal Zone. Finally we reach the Hadal Zone. This is the deepest, most mysterious part of our ocean plunging to depths of over 36,000 feet. It's named after Hades, the ancient Greek god of the underworld, and when you learn more about it, you'll understand why. Imagine a world of crushing pressure, constant cold and complete darkness. That's the Hadal Zone. The pressure here is a staggering 1,000 times greater than at sea level. It's like having 50 jumbo jets piled on top of you. The temperature hovers just above freezing and the sun's rays are a distant memory, swallowed by the miles of water above. But even in these extreme conditions, life persists. Meet the snailfish, the reigning champion of the deep. These gelatinous tadpole-like creatures have been found at depths of over 26,000 feet. They've adapted to life in the Hadal zone with bodies that can withstand the phenomenal pressure, and they feed on tiny invertebrates that drift down from above. Then there are the amphipods, small crustaceans that look like oversized fleas. They're scavengers, feasting on anything that falls to the ocean floor, including the remains of whales. These creatures have evolved to survive in a world that seems utterly inhospitable to us. Despite its fascinating inhabitants, the Hadal zone remains largely unexplored. Its extreme conditions pose significant challenges for exploration. The few remote-operated vehicles that have made it this far, have captured glimpses of an otherworldly landscape, teeming with life we're only just beginning to understand. The Hadal Zone is a testament to the resilience of life, a showcase of evolution's power to adapt and thrive in the harshest of environments. It reminds us that there are still places on our own planet that are as alien to us as the surface of Mars. The Hadal Zone is the final frontier of the ocean, a place where few have dared to venture. But who knows what secrets it holds waiting to be discovered in its cold, inky depths. Now what if we could drain the ocean? Let's take a moment to ponder that. The first thing we'd notice would be the exposed seafloor, a vast, uncharted expanse, suddenly open to the sky. This would lead our eyes to the revealed underwater mountains and trenches, grander than anything we have on land. Life as we know it would change drastically. Marine animals, once gracefully swimming, would now be stranded and gasping for breath, while the uncovered shipwrecks and artifacts would serve as stark reminders of our past. The potential for scientific discovery and exploration would be immense. We could learn more about our planet's history, climate shifts, and perhaps even find clues to the origins of life itself. Draining the ocean would reveal a world as diverse and mysterious as any on land, but for now, we'll have to continue exploring it one layer at a time.